All right. Hey, Instagram and YouTube, it's Gordon Miller. Uh, welcome to Live at Five. So um, I had a couple things I want to do today. So I want to talk about uh, various business models and also what you have to do if you're going to buy or sell your business. And um, so um, the uh, one of the calls I had the other day, uh, there was a uh, there were a couple of things that I want to uh, uh, address today. So hang on just a second. Let me get the uh, info here. The um, all right. All right. So I posted this before uh, last week and uh, took a lot of hits for it. Uh, but, um, the, um, the reality was, is that somebody came to me with an idea and, um, I spent like an hour at like between three and 4 AM, uh, trying to help her understand what she was doing. Now she had a product in the beauty and, um, in the beauty and, and, and hair care and, other, you know, space. So she had, um, uh, an idea to be able to, uh, in cosmetics or beauty or other things like that, your overall cost has to be like 10% of the actual retail price, uh, at least. Because if you're going to wholesale and then retail, if you're going to offer the opportunity to somebody else, and this person was 19, and I took a lot of heat for this comment because I was like, okay, well, I'm going to like out her. I'm, first of all, I'm not giving her name. I'm not going to talk about specifically what she wanted to do. I'm going to talk about the mistakes she made. So she's a 19-year-old entrepreneur who has no college experience, no work experience, no, nothing has an, you know, pretty compelling idea for what to do. But uh, she asked about, you know, look, you know, here's what I want to do. I want to sell this thing for uh, $70 or 70 pounds or whatever it was. And, uh, and, you know, for me, I was like, okay, well, that's fine. So in order to sell it for 70 pounds or $70, you have to do it for, you know, about, 10% of that. So you have to do it for $7. Well, her cost was like $20. And I was like, well, you can't do that because if you want to sell it for 70, you have to be able to offer it to the wholesalers for 35 or less. And there's not enough margin if your cost is like 20 and uh, and you're going to sell it for 35, your, your margin's less than 50% because you have 15% or $15 margin on a $20 item for 35. And um, so she got all pissed off like I was being, uh, you know, um, disrespectful. Well, I went ahead and said, you know, look, my, my, here's my quote because I've, I've, I've got it here on my phone. It's posted on my Instagram. So I said, I've given you, uh, I've given you my advice. Uh, of what's going to work. Work for two years for a top brand and realize how much you don't know. So first of all, that's the great part about, you know, my advice is that I'm going to give you what you want, what you need, even if you're not willing to take it. And so the biggest part of the problem for her was she was 19. She wanted to launch her own brand and it was a perfume or cosmetic or it was whatever it was. I'm not going to say what it was. Um, but, um, you know, and I did this in the commercial chemicals market for my father when I was in high school. So I spent seven years as the director of, uh, of logistics and shipping and receiving for my father's company. And the problem is, is that she does not understand that that cost has to be 10% of whatever the actual final retail cost is. Because in the end, you're only gonna get about 50% of that. And she didn't have that. And so I'm telling her that she needed to either get her cost down uh, so that that was actually possible, or she needed to charge more, which at $70, I mean, perfumes and cosmetics and things like that, the best you can possibly do is like maybe 20 bucks, maybe 50 bucks, but 70 bucks, 90 bucks, that's like, you know, so, so, you know, my favorite fragrances that I use are almost a hundred bucks for a fairly small amount of actual, you know, product. But you know what? It takes a massive amount 
of work to get that product to sell for 70, 80, 90, 100 bucks. You can't come in and have that product in the beauty and cosmetics industry worth that. You have to have a a 90% margin so that your 10% cost can be cut in half by your 50% gross margin so that you can actually make some money. And so she was already not going to make any money in this. And it was, it was just horrible. I mean, she, she was 19 years old, no college degree, no work experience, nothing other than the fact that she wants to build her brand. Well, I got news for you. You can build your fucking brand all day long, but if your price point for being able to hit that market is not right on, on, on target, you're fucked. Do you know how many other options there are for a great fragrance or a great beauty product at 20 bucks? And you want to charge, whoa, not 20, not 50, $70. Are you kidding me? God damn. I mean, come on. Give me a fucking break. And I, you know what? I've already taken enough shit from everybody else already on the fact that I'm going to go off on this on this 19 year old girl who wants to dominate the the fragrance or beauty industry. You know what? Fuck you guys. I don't fucking care. You know what? Block me. Fucking report me. Fucking I don't care. You know what? She has no clue what the basic business model is, and I'm going to out her on this fucking session. The reality is, is that. You can't have something that you want to sell for $70 when 90% of the of the rest of the market is selling for 20 bucks. You know, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 50 bucks. Whoa, 70. She's way up here. You can't be a premium brand without building premium brand value. You have no premium brand value. There is no such thing. You can't do that. It does not work. And you know what? I don't know. You know, I've gotten so much negative publicity since going live with this whole thing. What, what was it? What, what fucking date was that now? Uh, but, you know, whatever. But the, you know, my thing was, my advice to her was um, her, her business model and branding strategy is all wrong. The current model doesn't make enough profit, which is true. Uh, and doesn't return enough money to investors. So she was going to give away 40%, 40% of the company to the investors. Okay, well, that's great. The investors were putting in 50 to 50,000 each for 20%. So 40,000 was, was $100,000. But she couldn't make back the $100,000 quick enough to be able to repay the investors what she had said. It doesn't matter. You're not going to win. You have to do the motherfucking math. And you know what? I don't care. Block me. Report me. Fucking cancel me. I don't care. You know, you people have to understand your business model has to make sense. If your business model doesn't make sense, you're not going to make any money. If you don't make any money, you're not going to return any money to your investors. You're not going to succeed. And so after giving her th this advice, as well as some other advice, you know, I wished her the best of luck. And I told her, I said, given my advice, my advice to you is to work for the top brand for two years and realize how much you don't know. And she blocked me. You know what? Fuck you and the horse you rode in on. I, gave, I spent an hour doing the deconstruction for your entire fucking industry, giving you the entire amounts of the net versus gross, what you had to do to be successful. And you know what? This is, so here, here's the actual thing here. So uh, here, you know, 4.11 a.m. So, you know, I'm up at 3 a.m. And I tell her to go fuck herself at 4 a.m. You know, I spent an hour, over an hour, making sure that she understood at 19 fucking years old that she has no fucking clue what it takes to succeed in business. And she's going to motherfuck me and she's going to block me. You know what? Fucking block me. Fucking all of you block me. You know what? I will tell all of you the brutal motherfucking truth about what you don't 
fucking understand in order to make sure you're successful. I am so sick and fucking tired of you people who literally call me, FaceTime me at 4 a.m. my time because you're in fucking Nigeria or where the fuck you are and it's not 4 a.m. where you are. Well, you know what? It's 4 a.m. where I the fuck am. So, you know what? I'm going to go through and break down why you don't fucking know what the fuck you think you know and all of a sudden, boom, I'm the bad guy? Go fuck yourself. You know, I am so sick and tired of the fact that you know, it's like I am trying to help you be the best version of yourself that you can be. But unfortunately, a number of you are like, oh my God, you're mean. You know, at like, here, let me see if I can find her, find her actual text to me. Here, let me go back. Oh no, she blocked me. So I, I can't, I, I can't access that. All right. So, so she was like, her comment before she blocked me was, you're mean. You know what? I'm not mean. The world is fucking mean. And if we you know what, if you can't take my criticism, Alexa, stop. So if you can't take my criticism, there is no fucking way you will ever be successful in whatever the fuck you do. Because you know what? You are a snowflake. You do not have what it takes to be successful. You might as well pack it the fuck in right now. You know, I, I can't believe... You know, I, I've said before that I think the highest in the highest earning potential is in female entrepreneurs 18 to 29. And this is a 19-year-old female entrepreneur wanting to break into the beauty space, and she won't accept the fact that I'm not gonna simply rubber stamp her motherfucking idea of what success looks like. Well, you know what? That is not gonna make you successful. You have been given a, a, a you've been sold a, a bill of goods. You have been given a fucking lie by all your friends who are like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Do that. You know what? Your fucking friends are fucking yes people, and you don't need fucking yes people in your life. You need people who are going to spend one motherfucking hour giving you the decomposition of every reason why that's not going to be successful. And the reason it's not going to be successful is because those people don't fucking care whether you succeed or not. They're going to be like, oh, I'm sorry it didn't work for you. You know what? Fuck them and fuck you. You know, I am so sick and tired of that. And everybody, you know, and, and what's worse is those of you who are like, oh, gee, I can't believe you're going to like out this girl. You know what? Fuck you too. Block me. You know what? I can't believe that you people really want me to go, oh, you shouldn't be that way about her. You know what? I'm not giving her fucking name. I'm not giving her brand ID. I'm not giving, I'm not going to post her fucking uh, slide deck, which sucked. I'm not going to post her brand name or her name or any of the other fucking shit. I'm just simply using as an example that, you know what? You people out there have no fucking clue. And if you don't have a clue, you need somebody who has a clue to tell you to get a motherfucking clue. And I, you know, so for me, you know, I had to take a week off because I was like so bent on this whole thing. And so now, okay, after a week, I'm back. Woohoo, I'm back. So, you know what? I am so sick and fucking tired of this. And, you know, the great thing is, is that, you know, there are people out there who really do enjoy what I have, what I bring to the table and what I have to offer. But I am, I'm telling you, this 19 year old who had a great fucking opportunity and had the benefit of all my advice is not going to actually succeed. And I'm sorry about that. All right. So let's take a look at the comments. Most of you guys are like, all right, well, you know, G's going insane, so it's all good. So, all right, let's see what we got here. So on Instagram, all right. So uh, literally love how assertive you are. Oh, you know, thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, long likes. Uh, that's why I'm successful. Thanks. I appreciate that. that I certainly am. Uh, man, love these live sessions. Well, thanks, Dan. I appreciate it, man. That's what I'm, I'm here for. So um, don't give a fuck about them. Some people just can't accept the fact that they're uh, they're poor, clueless bastards. Yep, that's a, yeah, that's true. All right, so let's check YouTube here. All right, let's see what we got here. Um, uh, let's see. They changed the... Uh, 
Ah, uh, there we go. All right, let's scroll back through it. Uh, can't build a brand if you're insolvent. Yeah, that's true. Thanks, AJ. I appreciate that. Very true. Uh, real talk. You don't know anything at 19. Uh, I was also uh, confident at that age uh, because I, uh, I equated success in school to expertise in realms beyond. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, AJ. Uh, people need to hear truth for sure. Otherwise, they live in a dream world. You know, Nick, you know, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, and, and so first of all, so Nick uh, on YouTube, uh, I want to say thank you so much. So the, the reality is, is that uh, after literally after 35 years in, in, in business, uh, 27 years with my own companies, 35 years in business total, the most important asset any people have is time. I can always make more money. I can't make more time. I'm 55. I'll be 56 in November. You know, I got like 20 more years maybe if I'm lucky. You know, 76, maybe 86 if I'm lucky. So, uh, you know, the one thing I can't make any more of is time. So, it, it, I share my thoughts with people in their 20s and 30s because I want you to know what I learned in my 50s that I didn't know in my 20s and 30s. Because I don't want you to fucking be here when you're 50. You know, I want you to save 20 years. I want those 20 years to be amazing years for you. I mean, come on, God damn. You know, it's like, you know, my content is demonetized. I'm not making any money off of this shit. I got no book to sell. I got no program to sell. You know, if you send me $99 before midnight tonight, I'm going to send you a set of steak knives and fuck you in the ass. You know, I'm not going to do that. There's nothing here that I'm making money off of. So, you know, the reality is, is that this is the benefit that saves you 20 motherfucking years of your life. And if that's not worth something, then fine. You know, go watch fucking Bran Stefan and, and Savannah Smiles and the feel-good, like, hug from Smurfs fucking videos that are out there. There's lots of shit out there that you can do with that. You know, you know, it, it just, you know, god damn it. You know, it just fucking kills me. You know, there's so much shit out there. You know, fucking pick something else. But, um, all right, so uh, people need, need to hear the truth. Otherwise, they live in a dreamland. Uh, thanks, Nick. Appreciate that. Um, let's see. Uh, we've got um, uh, Jesus. You're so right. I would work for you for free during uh, the weekends, spending uh, wisdom with real talks. I appreciate that. You know. Uh, so I'll, I'll mention that right now. So I've uh, been following me for years. I appreciate that. I do. And uh, have you thought about starting a private equity firm? Well, you know, Javier, I've, I've already been working in private equity for a while now. So, um, and uh, <laughs> the Graham slam. Yeah, you know, Dayton, I'm sorry. I had to do it, you know. And so, first of all, so Graham Stephan, you know, first of all, I love Graham Stephan. And I'm not going to tag him. But you know what? You know, he and his girlfriend, Savannah Smiles, have, have you know, I mean, Graham makes $1.1 million a year off his videos. Because he bleeps out everything, he spends all these hours editing stuff, you know, he doesn't say, fuck you, you know, because you know what, he's not going to do that because it gets him demonetized. Well, you know what, my shit's not monetized, so fuck all of you, you know, it, it doesn't matter to me, uh, I'm not making money off the fact you're watching this video, I want to change your life. Graham Stephan only wants to make money off your stupid ass for watching his videos. So watch his fucking videos, make him a millionaire, and, you know, fucking, I don't care. But, you know, it just is, you know, the reality that it is. So, uh, all right. Um, let's see here. Uh, you're dropping gems. You're literally helping people if they keep their ego aside. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that, Nick. Yeah, you know, you, you, you got to check your ego at the door. I mean, for me, that was the hardest thing I had to learn. So when I was 26, 27, 28, and then I started the company uh, 29 before my 30th birthday, uh, you know what? I was the biggest motherfucking asshole in the world. Then I met my wife. Then we had kids. And then I realized, you know what? You don't control fucking shit. You control nothing. 
you are, you know, control is a complete illusion. And the reality is, is that if you think you control anything, you are kidding your fucking self. You are lucky to be, you're lucky to make it home alive every night. So the reality is, is that, you know, you have to get a different perspective on the reality for life. So, uh, for sure. I mean, you know, I'm happy to help anybody who's willing to take my help. But if you're not willing to listen, if all you, if you want to be, you can, you have two choices in this world. You can be right, or you can be successful, or you can be right, or you can be happy. And unfortunately, most people want to be fucking right. You want to be right, but your whole context for being right is completely wrong. You are not going to succeed. I am trying to tell you what you're doing is completely wrong and you have no possibility for success. If you don't listen to me, you are not going to be successful. You are going to waste a decade of your life pursuing the wrong fucking thing and you are not going to win. Why would you waste your 20s, your 30s, your 40s? Why would you fucking waste your life doing shit that's not going to work? Because you won't take any any advice, not just my advice. There's lots of advice. There's lots of people willing to give you advice. But I am not going to sugarcoat it. I am not going to try and tell you what you might want to hear. This isn't Quora. There's no be nice, be respectful policy. You all can fucking, you know, block me for all I care. But I tell you what, if you reach out, if you reach out in one of these live sessions... Or if you go to gordonmiller.com and book a session, I'm happy to tell you what it takes to be successful. And in fact, the people who have booked sessions with me in the last six months have been incredibly successful. And I'm going to get back to one of those here in a minute because it's, it's important in terms of the next phase for what I want to do, which is what it takes to either sell or buy a business, which we're going to get to in a minute here. But it's, you know, it's just one of those kind of things where, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm triggered. You know, I've had enough. So I'm more animated today than, I, than I've ever been because you know what? I don't fucking care anymore. I am so sick and tired of posting my comments to the 19-year-old female entrepreneur who's like, oh my God, you're so mean to me. You know what? Fuck. You know, you're, it, it just, I'm not mean to you. The world is mean. I'm just trying to prepare you for what's coming. You're going to get smacked in the fucking face with whatever you try to do. And I'm trying to keep you from that pain. You know what? That's all good. You're going to hit in the face. It's all good. All right. So what are the other comments here? All right. So, um, all right. Steak knives. That's funny here. Uh, so set of steak knives, second prize in the, <laughs> right, in Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Yeah. Steak knives are always a good prize, AJ. It's all good. Uh, so let's start a video course for sale on how to make video courses to sell. You know what, Dayton? Uh, you know, I've thought about that, but you know, I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm not that kind of guy for me, you know, so for, you know, for me, this is me. You're going to get the authentic me. So I, I've, it's taken me a week to finally get the time. You know, I, I was I was Monday, Wednesday, Friday. My son's soccer things moved earlier on Tuesday, Thursday. Thankfully, my older son was able to give uh, my youngest uh, son a ride to practice. So I was able to go live today. You know, and it's just because the, the three times a week was just like too difficult for me. I had other stuff I had to get done and things like that. So I was hoping Tuesday and Thursday was going to work better than Wednesday or Monday, Wednesday and Friday. But uh, damn, you know, so um, all right. So um, fake guru selling courses for uh, 1997 uh, with uh, generalized knowledge. Yeah, right. Of course, that you can find in a $10 book. Of course, Nick, you know, and that's it, it, honestly, you know, so Nick, you know, I appreciate that on YouTube. So Nick, this is why I will never fuck anybody over on stupid shit. You know, go to my link and buy my book or go to my link and buy my course. So, uh, you know, are you kidding me? Are you really seriously fucking kidding me? You know, I am not going to do that. It, it is beyond me how in the world anybody uh, can sell a course for whatever amount. I don't care if it's $97 or $1,997. But, um, you know, everybody's out there to sell something. You know, if, if you watch, you know, so 
I am not a huge real estate guy in the first place. And I am definitely not a Grant Cardone guy. Grant Cardone has like an IQ of fucking 45. There is no way Grant Cardone... I, I read 10X. I bought 10X. Sorry about that. I even bought the millionaire book that he, he, was, he was pimping you know, after that. The reality is, is that uh, Grant Cardone doesn't have enough IQ cycles to do fucking shit. But he's out there. They're selling, you know, he's like, you know what you should do? You should reinvest every dollar into my program. You know, are you fucking kidding me? Are you, you know, the people who have no possible way of making money on real estate. You know, Grant Cardone, you are making, you are making 6% on the way in. You're making 6% on the way out. And you're making 6% a year in a management fee. You know what? You're a fucking vampire. It's bullshit. You know, the only people making money in real estate is fucking you, Grant Cardone, because when they buy your course, all they're doing is supporting your inept ability to manage the properties that you all are doing. If you look at your agreements, the agreements are public knowledge. Do the fucking Google search. Grant Cardone. You know, you've got a 6% management fee. You've got a 6% on the way in and on the way out. So you make 6% a year. You make 6% on the way in and 6% on the way out. If your partners are losing money so bad they want to sell the property at whatever cost, you still make all your money. You know, what are you worried about? Your deal protects you. And you put in less than 10% of the actual money in the first place. You're the biggest fucking con artist there is in the motherfucking world. The fact that you're not in jail aside from from, uh, you know, Jordan Belfort and everybody else who's served prison time. I can't believe you're still fucking walking the streets. It's ridiculous. Your deals are so punitive. It's insane. You know, the fact that anybody's dumb enough to sign your contracts with you making the kind of money you're making on those deals is absurd. The only person making money in real estate, win, lose, or draw is you, Grant Cardone. You know, and that's bullshit. It's bullshit because you are the one who makes the rules and your investors lose and you're the only one who wins, even if all your investors lose. That's bullshit. So I'm not putting up with that. You're about as bad as the 19-year-old chick with no clue. So, all right, see what else we got here. Um, let's see. Um... So, Fake Guru is selling courses for... Yep, we talked about that. Uh... Dude, we make a killing. Uh, are you into real estate? No, I'm not into real estate. Uh, AJ uh, says, uh, uh, let's see, that movie keeps it real with sales and success. First prize is a brand new Cadillac. Yeah, right. Second prize is steak knives. Uh, third place is you're fired. Yep, that's about right. Uh, can you share your experience on your one-to-one uh, -one calls? Yeah, so you know what, Nick? I'm going to do that. Here, I'm going to do it in just a second here. So uh, let's see here. Message retracted. That's a shame. Come on, Dayton. Grow some balls. Send me the fucking message again. Uh, uh, fuck, you mentioned Belfort. Grant went uh, on his Wolf of Wall Street po podcast uh, last year and got roasted. So here. Oh, man. You know what, Dayton? I tell you what, okay, well, you know, deleted. Well, then don't delete your messages. If I answered your question, don't delete the messages. You know, have the balls to leave them fucking there. You know, if your life is going to be deleting shit uh, that you already got the answer to, then you're going to be like, uh, you know, you're going to be end up being, uh, you know, a bigger problem than you, uh, you, than you cause here. So, first of all, I want to say, so... Jordan Belfort, I have an enormous amount of respect for you. And not that Jordan's ever going to see this, but uh, what the fuck ever. So, you know what? Jordan uh, is the real deal. And I saw that interview. That is one of the most painful interviews I have ever seen in my entire fucking life. You know, the fact that Jordan was like, woo, okay, well, you know, he gave him a softball question and Grant Cardone, you know, like got defensive. And, and Jordan's like, Okay, fine. Okay, good. No problem. Whatever. And then, uh, and then Grant like doubled down on like I'm pissed. Are you fucking kidding me? You have an IQ of like a retarded six year old. I can't believe that in in any way possible, Grant Cardone, you know, could hold his own against Jordan Belfort. Jordan Belfort is a fucking god among financial. Uh, 
masterminds in the, in, in the entire context of that. And, and there's no possible way that, um, that Grant Cardone could hold his own against Jordan Belfort. It is ridiculous. And, and so, and Grant Cardone comes up with some stupid shit that Jordan Belfort's like, mm, okay, well, you know, whatever, you know, I tried, you know, and, and so I have a lot of respect for Jordan because in the first interview, Jordan didn't out him. He was like, okay, let's roll with it. It's my show, fine, whatever. And, and you know what? That's the sign of, of a true professional. Jordan Belfort was like, eh, you know, okay, he's having a bad day, no big deal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll with it. But Grant Cardone wouldn't let it go. Grant, if you look at Grant, I, I, I've been following Grant for like three or four years. <laughs> if you look at his stuff, it's gotten increasingly desperate as the reality of what he's doing it becomes more public. <coughs> Sorry. And so the problem with Grant is that he knows the jig is up. People know what he's doing, you know, and, you know, in the video, like I saw today, where one of his VPs makes 600,000 a year <coughs> and he's going to make 2 million a year as a W2 employee. I'm not making this shit up. Go see Grant Cardone's shit. His live stuff that he was posting today was like, oh, I got W-2 employees that smoke weed all day and make $2 million a year. He's making six hundred grand a year, but he's reinvesting the six hundred grand in my own course, and he's going to make $2 million a year. It's bullshit. It's complete bullshit. I got news for you, Grant Cardone. Release the fucking W-2s for your W-2 employee. It's absolute bullshit. It does, it is not true. It is, it absolutely is not true. You know what? It's just, it's just more bullshit. You, you know, you just, you know, assume nobody's going to care about it. Nobody's going to check you on. Well, you know what? Fuck you. You know, it, it just is more bullshit. You're providing everybody else that doesn't make any sense. And if it doesn't make sense, it's not fucking true. So why in the world would you be that guy? But now you know what? That's his problem with me, Grant Cardone. You're now fucking that guy. You know, you are that guy because you don't have any intellectual honesty. You have no, you have no moral compass. You have nothing to guide you or your followers uh, to any success except raping them for every last fucking dollar they might have. And that's about it. So, you know, you know what, Grant Cardone? Ah, fuck you. So uh, as far as Jordan Belfort, first of all, great movie. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, great choice. Uh, for my movie, I want Brad Pitt to play me. So Brad, you know, call me. So um, the reality is, is that, uh, you know, the, the wolf of Wall Street, uh, you know, ran into his situations, dealt with his shit, came back 10x bitter, uh, not bitter, better than he was. And so uh, Jordan Belfort is now, one of the best guys out there in the industry. And, uh, and that's great. You know, I, 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 I admire and respect Jordan Belfort for what he's been through and for the fact that he came back 10x better. Awesome. So, yeah, speaking of 10x, which is, uh, which is Grant Cardone's thing. And I, you know what, Grant? Why don't you just admit to everybody you didn't write the fucking book. It was ghostwritten. You put your name on it. It's not really all that great a book anyway. So, um all right, so we have a question on YouTube about uh, what do I think of Robert Kiyosaki. So I did another video previously about Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So uh, go see that video for the uh, Robert Kiyosaki, uh, you know, love fest and circle jerk. Uh, all right, so um, let's see what we got here on um, YouTube here. Uh, let's see. Um, Original question, what about buying an investment that's positive cash flows with 25% down payment? Do you avoid real estate altogether? House hacking. So, um, also said Grant Cardone is a hack. Yep, I sure did. You know, and I stand by that. Grant Cardone is a complete hack. So, all right. So, uh, one of the questions was that I got was, um, what are some of my calls like? So, I love my calls. I, I love the fact that you can go to gordonmiller.com and click on the booking link and book an hour long call if you want. And I'm happy to, and, and if you, if you go on my LinkedIn account, so first of all, people are like, ah, you know, he's like pimping for calls. 
I'm not pimping for calls. You know, if you want to waste an hour of my time, then pay for the fucking time. You want to waste an hour of my time, 90% of the calls end up with a deal, which is either an equity investment, a connection, or some opportunity that leads us further along. And if you look at my uh, LinkedIn uh, recommendations, a number of those LinkedIn recommendations are from people who had calls. And those people ended up making a staggering amount of money versus what they paid for the call. <clears throat> so I'm happy to go head to head against, you know, it's like, well, you know, why are you asking for 250 bucks an hour? You know what? Because I don't want just anybody to waste an hour of my time. I mean, I have 300,000 followers almost in my space on Quora. And I, I, I don't have enough time to spend an hour long call with 300,000 people and still get anything done in a given year. I mean, my God, I mean, there's only 2,000 hours in a year. If I spent an hour long call, it'd be like 15 fucking hours or 15 fucking years worth of calls. I wouldn't get anything done. So if you want my time, you want me to give you some input on what you're doing, then book a call on gordonmiller.com. I mean, it's just that simple. So in terms of the calls, uh, one of the, so I want to do a thing about uh, what it takes to get your business uh, funded or what it takes to either sell or to buy a business. And that was the other thing I promised to be able to do today. So um, aside from the 19-year-old female entrepreneur who just like fucking wasted it an hour of my time from 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. one morning, you know, it's like, you know, I, I, I've again, I've said that I think the highest income earning potential is from women from 18 to 29. So if you're female, 18 to 29, you have a good idea, then message me and let's figure out if you have a good idea. But if I give you the benefit of a free hour of my time and you're like, oh, you're so mean, I can't handle it. You know, I mean, you know what? Fuck it. You know, I, I, I may be hard on you. I may be very direct. But if you can't handle my input, you are not going to be able to handle the reality of the world out there. So it's best that you just quit and work at Burger King or whatever the hell you're going to do than deal with the reality of what the world is out there. The world is going to eat you alive. I mean, it's hard enough if you're like a 20-year-old guy, uh, you know, first of all, if you're a 20-year-old white male entrepreneur, the reality is that 90% of the time, you are not going to have to face all the other stuff that female entrepreneurs or minority entrepreneurs or other people deal with. So you know what? You're already way ahead of the game. So congratulations. You know, I don't really fucking care about helping you. And it, it's not a thing about, oh, Gordon's focusing on, you know, 18 to 29-year-old women. I'm not, you know, they don't, they get like 4% of the funding. You know, I'm focused on them because if they have the drive and determination, if they test well enough and they have a good idea, I want to help them because 98% of the people out there, 96% aren't going to help them. And so, okay, great. I don't care if you're a minority woman or a, a white woman, don't care. Not my deal. The reality is, is that if you are in one of the categories that does not include white males under 30, you're not going to get as much visibility as you probably deserve. And you know what? I want to make sure that doesn't happen to you. So I'm happy to help. But the reality is, is that there are things you have to be able to do. So one of the calls that I had the other day was, uh, it was a, it, you know, it was a free call actually, instead of a paid call because of the way in which the person had sent me some information ahead of time. Uh, but um, the reality was is that when I got on the call, I was like, damn, I wish I was collecting a toll for this one because this was like a waste of time. Uh, he had given away 38% of the company, 18%, plus was looking for another 20%. So he's willing to give away 38% of the company. First of all, you can't do that. You can't give away 38% of the company and then look for an investor knowing that there's likely going to be other investors. You'll end up with less than 50% of the company. Not only does that not work for you, that does not interest investors. So the reality is, is that he had created a situation for himself like, oh, you get 5%, you get 10%, you get 20%. You can't do that. It just doesn't work that way. The reality is, is that uh, investors like clean deals. And so it's like, okay, well, send me the cap table and all the paperwork with all your investors. Well, we just have a verbal agreement. 
uh, I'm sorry, you're about to launch an app where you have a verbal agreement for what you're going to do? Oh my fucking God, are you kidding me? You don't have shares issued. You don't have the shareholder agreements updated. You don't have all this stuff. How do they know what they own? How do they know the money they've already put in is going to be protected? Because you know the investors are going to do that. <clears throat> How in the world do you possibly look for additional money when you have no clue how to secure all the money you've already gotten. God damn. You know, and then, you know, it was a deal where they didn't own the development rights and they didn't even own their own intellectual property. They're like, oh yeah, we have like a verbal agreement. You have a verbal agreement on an app development deal? Are you fucking kidding me? Are you, do you know how difficult it is to make sure you enforce your intellectual property rights on development when somebody can easily file a mechanics lien on just about in just about any country in the entire world and and then hold up anything you do they can also not transmit all the source code to you so no code repository no checks and balances no live view of whatever it is only the actual designs uh and and oh yeah the app's gonna go live any day now you know what are you fucking kidding me? There is no way your app is going to likely go live on time. If it goes live on time, there's no guarantee it'll be accepted into the Google and, and App Store uh, for Apple. There's no, and especially when you find out that there was a they were trying to circumvent some of the payment issues. I'm like, well, you know, Apple's not that stupid. And they're like, well, we're going to explain to Apple. <laughs> like, you're going to explain to Apple why you designed what you're doing so that Apple doesn't make fucking 30%? I'm sorry, but Apple is actually smarter than that. You know, you don't get to have like almost a trillion dollars in value and hundreds of millions in cash and be that fucking stupid. I mean, it just is ridiculous where people don't understand the reality of, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, we're trying to get it one over on Apple. You know, like, really, you're trying to get one over on Apple. You know, what you're doing is actually a great idea. You probably can make, you know, a, you know, a million, two million next year. I could probably sell it tomorrow for 10 million, you know, and you still own like 60%, you know, so that's not a bad deal. But, uh, you know, the reality is, is that none of your shit's documented. You know, your cap table's not documented. Your software development agreement isn't documented. None of your shit's documented. You don't have any control of your processes. My God. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's an absolute nightmare. You can't make any money that way. You can't prep your business for sale that way. It's ridiculous. So, man, it's just, it, it's, the, I can't believe that, you know, people are like that, that it's just like, okay, you know, whatever. So, um, you know, so much for the free session for, uh, for that, you know, and, and it's funny too, cause they came back to me, you know, and, and I don't care if you see this or not, cause I'm not giving your name. And if I really wanted to fuck you over, I'd give you your name, but I actually think I can sell this bitch for $10 million. So I'll make a million dollars on my own just for not fucking you over. So there you go. But the reality is, is that, um, you know, you don't have any of your shit under control. You are just making verbal agreement after verbal agreement. You come back to me and you're like, hey, look, I'll give you the 20,000. Uh, you know, I'll give you the 20%. Just give me 10,000 in cash. You know what? No. You know, the last 10,000 in cash didn't get any actual ownership because you didn't go through the paperwork. The, the 10,000 before that didn't get anything. Are you kidding me? There's no fucking way I'm going to give you $10,000. And you know what? The sad thing is, is that $10,000 for 20%, where I think I can actually sell this thing for about $10 million, is $2 million. Bucks. And, and it's a great deal. But for me, I'm not going to fucking do it because you don't fucking have control of your own processes. I mean, you know, you could be sued into oblivion for the next 10 years. And my great deal I could do in like 90 days on $10 million is held up by your stupid fucking shit. I mean, you know, if you want to buy or sell a business, you can't have, you, you know, you can't have all this stuff up in the air. You have to know what you're doing. You have to have your stuff organized. You have to have your stuff together. You can't do that. And it just, it, it is beyond me how people end up uh, focused on the wrong things. And, uh, but you know what? 
I tell you what, I mean, it was not, you know, so first of all, that free call for an hour lasted three hours, three hours. And the one after that for an hour that somebody booked an actual hour for and paid for, it also lasted three hours. So they were back to back. And uh, thankfully, those were the only two calls I had that day. So the good thing is, is that if you want to go to gordonmiller.com and book an hour, there's a good chance it'll go an hour, maybe two, maybe more. Uh, I mean, you know, the link you get gets, you know, allows you to choose whatever my schedule is. Pick a time where I don't have something backed up next to it. I mean, you know, you know, it's it's as simple as that. So I will work with somebody as long as it takes uh, to get, uh, you know, the right answer. But, you know, you've got to be ready, willing, and able to do stuff. i tell you what, the best call I ever had, literally, I mean, literally. So uh, I've, had a, I've had some great partners over the years. And one of the best partners I've ever had is a good buddy of mine. I won't give him, I won't give his name because I love him. We've done lots of work together. And um, but my call the other day was from a a, a, a guy from Moldova and uh, in Eastern Europe. Literally the best call I've had since I met you know my buddy in in 2008. Uh, literally reminds me in so many ways of my other partner. Uh, and, uh, we went on to make millions of dollars together. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, this other great guy in Moldova, he spent, you know, and, and spent the money to, to buy an hour. We were in it for three hours and we, we went literally, as my father used to say, we went from far left to far right. And we dealt with all the issues and he is an amazing guy. We are going to do some amazing things together. I just know we are. And, um, and it was great. I, I really enjoyed the call. It was three of the best hours that I've had literally since 2008. So in 12 years, I've not met another individual as amazing as this person. And he's in his early twenties and he is a, um, he's an amazing guy. Uh, and I really love all that he brings to the table. And I think he's got some great things to offer and I'm looking forward to it. You know, I, I meet some great people, you know, and, uh, believe me, the, you know, book of the calls is not about me making, uh, 250 bucks for the hour book in the call is about, uh, all the other people who don't believe enough in what they're doing, uh, to book a call. So good. All right. Don't book a call. I mean, you know, it's fine. You know, and people will go, you know, Hey, can I book one for less? No. I mean, you know, it's just, you know, if you want to book a 30 minute call, you can book a 30 minute call for 125, but it's to be like, Hey, okay, thanks. Appreciate it. So, uh, but the reality is, is that there are lots of opportunities out there and I've really enjoyed working with all of you. And I really enjoy the calls. The calls are going well and you can see the comments on LinkedIn about that. So, all right, let me check the uh, comments again here since I got behind, but, um, Let's see. Original question: What about buying an investment? The uh, positive cash flow, twenty five percent down. Uh, do you avoid? Oh, so okay. So I had this question about um, somebody was talking about people buying and selling businesses. So the great thing is, is that in today's economy, uh, because of the COVID nineteen lockdown, there are a lot of people who are you know so much lower in revenue uh, that uh, they aren't able to survive. Uh, on the money that they're making, and they don't have enough cash reserves to carry them through. So there are lots of people selling. And in fact, there are actually lots of people buying. And so that's great. Good. You know, the, it's a great time. If you're selling, there are lots of buyers. Uh, you're not going to get, but probably 80% of what, whatever your thing is worth, but you know, that's, that's what it is. So, um, but uh, one of the things you have to be able to do, just like I said about the, the last guy who didn't have his cap table stuff in order, didn't have his actual, you know, software engineering, you know, contract in order, didn't, you know, wasn't live with his, his uh, app yet. You know, you have to have, you know, in order to be able to prepare your business for sale, you have to have at least 10,000 paid users that are paying at least $10 or 100,000 users for free. If you don't have that then you're not ever going to be able to get a million users or a hundred thousand paid users to make a million bucks. It's just the reality. Investors use that as a rule of thumb to be able to determine, you know, Hey, if you couldn't get a hundred thousand people to sign up, 
And, uh, you know, we have one site in education where there's 100,000 registered users that pay $0, and there are 15 million page views a year. Uh, we make an enormous amount of money based on those. And, uh, you know, the, the contract, the whole program, makes an enormous amount of money. So you have to be able to understand that that's the reality of the way these things go. You can't simply just, you know, hey, I got this great idea and I'm trying to build this app and, you know, and hope for the best. It doesn't work that way. You know, it just is what it is. So, all right, let's see what else we got on YouTube. We got about 10 minutes left. So, uh, let's see. Grant Cardone is a hack. Yep. Uh, Jordan Belfort is a larger than life personality. Yep, he sure is. And uh, uh, can you do him his, my best impression of his accent? No, I can't. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, how do you feel on investing in uh, in actively uh, versus passively managed funds? Uh, there's some interesting looking managed funds on tech, like uh, and you give the ones. Uh, long-term stability is, uh, the issue. All right. I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute, Joseph. Um, boom, a wealth of your knowledge. Most of your 19 year olds don't even know what, um, mechanics lean is. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, AJ. Uh, is there a template you recommend people follow, uh, for pitching businesses? Best way to, uh, mature ideas efficiently, uh, growing in terms of proper order. So James, uh, I have a couple of videos on the perfect pitch deck. If you do a search on YouTube, since that's where your question came from for Gordon Miller and perfect pitch deck, it'll give you the two videos that I suggest what you do. Uh, so Joseph, in terms of exchange traded funds and uh, managed versus non-managed funds. So managed funds have higher fees and I'm not a huge fan of higher fees. Uh, I'm about Vanguard or Fidelity or some of the other guys, and uh, I'm about uh, just sitting, putting it in there and not touching it. So you don't need somebody to manage your shit. You know, when you get to be my age, I'm 55, I'll be 56 in November. If I balance shit out and start uh, dollar cost averaging and lower my basis where I sell on December 31st and buy back on January 1st, there are some things I can do to save some taxes and shit like that. But, you know, that tax dodge bullshit is just bullshit. You know, I mean, you know, literally, yeah, you have to sell and buy and change your basis. But you know who makes all the motherfucking money? Your fucking broker. Your broker's going to make his commission. Uh, and the commission is likely way higher than whatever the actual uh, reality of your gain is on the tax benefits. Now, it might, because because it's on the whole thing. I mean, you know, so you, okay, so you're going to pay a commission on the sale of whatever it is going to sell, and you're going to buy it back, and you're going to pay 2% on the way in and 2% on the way out. Are you really going to give a 4% gain uh, on what would have been an 8 or 10% liability in the first place? Maybe, but goddamn, I mean, come on, don't be a fucking idiot. I mean, just let it fucking ride. It may go up or it may go down. I mean, you know, 10 years from now, when you're going to pay taxes on it, if it goes down by 30%, you wouldn't pay any taxes anyway. So who the fuck cares? I mean, you know, don't don't get lured in by this bullshit right now. So you can't hear me. Well, I'm sorry you can't hear me. Uh, everybody else seems to be able to hear me. So uh, not sure what the problem is there. Hopefully you can hear me. All right, so go back to Instagram here. All right, so... Um, all right, so... Love your wisdom. No bullshit talked. I'm hooked on your lives. Thanks, uh, say I appreciate that. You know, um, uh, if I have no business ideas now, uh, what we suggest? Well, you know, I, uh, so her travel story. Hey, thanks. You know, I appreciate the DMs and I appreciate your interest. So uh, the, you know, the ideas come from looking for an opportunity to solve a problem. So I actually look for opportunities in my own life. So, um, you know, I got sick and tired of paying ridiculous amounts of money at the last minute to travel. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I tend to like to stay in pretty nice hotels and things like that. And, uh, you know, if I'm traveling at the last minute and now my, my cost at the Ritz-Carlton or my cost at, 
you know, the Hilton or the Hyatt is like 500 bucks a night. I'm like, fuck that. I'm going to go, I'm going to go to Airbnb, find a nice house that I get all to myself, you know, for 200 bucks. You know, so now I got like a 5,000 square foot house with a pool uh, that I can get for, you know, for the, you know, for a half the amount it would cost to stay at the same Ritz or, or Hilton or Hyatt, you know, so, you know, I look for ways to solve problems and I look for what the opportunity is. So any specific skills or words of wisdom to a man who's going to be 21 soon? Well, damn shit. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, you're going to be 21. You got the whole, your whole life ahead of you, man. Uh, my major advice for anybody 21 years old and, uh, and it is literally all about, uh, the fact that, um, you need to put 500 to a thousand dollars a month away for the next 40 years. If you do nothing else, put it in an index fund of the Dow or S and P 500 and make sure it's in a no load mutual fund. Uh, if you want to put it in a Roth IRA, that's fine too. But, uh, my number one thing uh, when you're 21 is put money away where you can't touch it. Uh, that 500 to a thousand dollars a month, if you do it right over the next 40 years from the time you're 21, to the time you're 61 is, or 65 is going to be $1.8 million. And it doesn't matter if you do anything else. You could have a great business. You could be great in real estate. You could do whatever else. But, you're, but you know what? An extra $1.8 million is not going to kill you when you're 61. You know, and if everything else gets fucked over, your business goes bust, your real estate is worth nothing, and you got nothing else to live for, you know what? You're still going to have between $1.2 and $1.8 million, and, and uh, you're going to be able to retire. So uh, just follow my advice. I mean, you know, I, I, frankly, I wish I had taken my own advice. I mean, I didn't get that advice till about 10, 12 years ago. Uh, for my accountants. And, uh, you know, I opted to invest in my companies and that's fine. But the reality is, is if I was 21, I would be putting $500 a month away, uh, about 25% uh, of your uh, of your net take-home pay is, is what I recommend, 20 to 25%. And um, I know that's a lot. And I know everybody's like, oh, I only make three grand a month take-home. You know, I get that. But the reality is, is that if you don't buy Starbucks, you don't go out to eat, and you don't, you know, spend, you know, hundred dollar nights out at the bar picking up bar tabs and, and drinking, when you could buy a twenty dollar bottle of vodka and drink at home on your own, uh, the reality is, is that you're going to have the money to be able to do the stuff that I tell you to do, and uh, it's just about a matter of choices. And some people make the choices, and some people won't. No pain, no gain. You're exactly right. What's my opinion on Kiyosaki? We talked about that. I think he's a, he's a good guy. The cash flow quadrant kind of changed my life. And the uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad videos that I have under my account will uh, tell you that. Um, man, what are your thoughts on the binary trade options? Uh, are those scams? They are indeed scams. So are Forex. So is Bitcoin. So is all that motherfucking shit that's out there. It drives me fucking crazy. So, uh, it's, it's nuts. Can't hear you. What's the best first time investment a young person can do in their early twenties. And that's the, uh, index fund of the S and P 500 and the Dow. So on Instagram, I have a, a minute and 42 seconds left. So let's see what we got here. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Um, being down on investment can be an asset because you can sell for a loss. That's true. If you have a, an offset for a capital gain, uh, motel six in thousand Oaks ain't bad. No, that's true. Uh, how to close, uh, best five people around me. Uh, my issues, and I'll get back to that. All right. I'll, I'm going to stay on YouTube and, uh, this broadcast sponsored by gray goose. So, uh, indeed. So, uh, here you go. Grey Goose, mm. Mm. but it's full, so, you know, it's not sponsored by Grey Goose, but I wish it were, but um, saw your advisory crypto and Forex, yeah, on LinkedIn, yeah, thanks, AJ. All right, I'm going to stay on uh, YouTube, and I'm going to finish answering these questions. If you want to go from Instagram to YouTube, it's youtube.com slash, um, I believe it's Gordon G. Miller III, but uh, it used to be slash Gordon Miller, so I don't know, whatever. But, um, the, um, 
I look forward to it. I'm glad to be back live at 5, 20 seconds left. Go to gordonmiller.com, book a call. An hour can change your life, I promise you. Uh, look on Instagram and YouTube and also on LinkedIn. Join my LinkedIn community and I'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. Appreciate Instagram. Bye. All right. Hang on just a second. Let me just go ahead and save this. All right. So, uh, one of the questions that I got uh, was um, about uh, buying a business. So, I had made a comment about the fact that uh, there were businesses for sale and that there were opportunities out there. And somebody had asked about uh, how in the world were there opportunities out there when um, there, um, they didn't have any money. And there were people out there, 18, 19 years old, buying businesses. So the, the, the way you do that is you actually look for businesses where the owner is willing to own or finance the business. And um, so my recommendation for that uh, is the fact that, you know, it's, it's usually called an earn out or a buyout and the, it's done over time and uh, a, a certain percentage of the profits, usually not more, more than about 50%, uh, is dedicated to the individual who is, uh, is going to be bought out. Uh, most of the time, though, the financials that they provide and the valuation that they're doing is all bullshit. So they're lying about what the, the company's worth. They're lying about the valuation. They're lying about how much money you're going to make. And that's why I recommend that you do the net profit and a 50-50 split of the net profit over a period of time. And so the buyout is, let's say it's over five years and they want a million dollars over five years then um, you know they're going to want two hundred thousand a year. But if you don't make four hundred thousand a year net, then there's no reason to give them two hundred thousand. I've done so many uh, deals where I did the analysis in my calls uh, when you go to gordonmiller.com and book a session, and the analysis was this barely makes two hundred thousand dollars a year, and you're committed to paying this idiot two hundred thousand dollars a year for five years if you do it this way. You're going to pay them 90%, maybe even 110% of whatever it is. You're going to have to come out of pocket to pay this guy. So you're not going to make any money. You're up zero profit. And you're going to end up having to pay somebody to buy their business, which is bullshit. I mean, you know, if it makes money, then split it with them and then, you know, create a real opportunity. But most people aren't going to do that. Uh, most people are going to try to take you for everything they can possibly get from you. And uh, that's the way it is. All right, let me take a look at the other comments here. Um, so, how to choose the best five people around me. My issues, hang out less with people, can't force myself in any relationship. I feel I should, it should happen naturally. So, um, uh, Sylvania, uh, so first of all, uh, it's an interesting problem. So, uh, I learned something several years ago, which was amazing to me. So, you are as successful as the five people that you hang around with the most, if you are the least uh, least successful here, we'll take the pinky. So if you're the pinky in that group, then you're fucked. You need four four new friends because you are you are the weakest link in that five person group, which means you have nothing to offer, and 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 or you're you know you are you're not providing any value and they're not getting any value. And so you need to find people that are like way better than you are. And you need to, if you're the, if you're the most, I guess that would make you this person, if you're the middle finger. So if you're the middle finger in the group and you're the one providing most of the value, then the rest of the folks don't offer any value to you. So you want to be the pinky so that you can be able to uh, get more value out of that so you can move forward. So sorry, wrong analogy. 
All right, so uh, let's see here. Um, all right, so is there a certain revenue you need to hit with a business uh, to make it more likely to be purchased? Uh, like is 250K enough uh, or only businesses in the million dollar range? So Luke, um, it depends. I mean, it depends on who you're selling to. It depends on if you're using a broker. I mean, some brokerages have a minimum in terms of, of gross revenue. Typically, you need about $5 million in sales uh, and a million net before somebody's really going to pay attention. Uh, because they, they want to spend money, but they also want to make money. And, and they figure if you can make $5 million, they can probably make $7 million. And, uh, because they, they always are like that. Uh, but, um, you know, you typically need to be able to generate, uh, at least a million dollars in total revenue and at least 250,000 in net revenue in order to be able to even have a chance at, at having somebody, uh, pay attention to it. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that the cost of buying a business, you know, the, uh, the, evalu the evaluation, the assessment, all the legal fees, all the other stuff is like fifty to a hundred thousand. So if you're going to buy a business that you're going to have to spend fifty to a hundred thousand buying, and the reality is is that you're not going to make more than two hundred fifty thousand net, then it's it's just not enough profit in the first year to justify the the near term cost. So most people actually won't be able to do it, or won't be willing to do it. All right. A friend is really into Forex, but had a feeling, seemed very fishy. Yeah, so James, you know, uh, my, my, my cryptocurrency and Forex warning was just, you know what, if you, if you have a, you know, if, if you want me to invest in Forex or in your cryptocurrency thing, if you hit me up on LinkedIn or Instagram, I'm just going to report you. I mean, I'm just so sick and tired of, hey, give me $1,000 and I'll invest it in crypto and I'll give you 10000 back in two weeks. You know, it just doesn't work that way. I mean, I get the fact that crypto allows you to buy on margin. The margin can be substantial. I understand that 1000 bucks buys you 10000 And I get if you do the right play, you could turn twenty into... 15, I'm sorry, 20, um, you could turn 10 into 15 uh, on a thousand bucks and then split it and give them seven and still make seven. I completely get all that, but that's if everything goes perfectly well. And so I, it just, it, it's not, it just isn't practical. Uh, and I don't think many people are, are being intellectually honest about it. So, all right. So, Uh, crypto, I'm not a huge fan of crypto. I got in, got out, and I'm happy I got out. So, uh, How do I find a great team of lawyers and bankers when buying a startup business? So typically you want to use a broker, uh, and the broker will bring all those assets with them. You'll pay them a fee, but you'll have the right people on your team, though. And I have people that are on the sell side and on the buy side, so, uh, Sank, if you want to reach out and book a call, I'm happy to help you as best I can. So, your advice for a 20-year-old working with a VC firm, how do you source plus invest in good deals? What are common red flags you look for? Bonus, any advice raising funds for the firm itself from family offices? Wow. All right. Well, you're a 20 year old working with VC firms. Well, you know what? Um, Srinath. So, uh, you know, you don't even know what you don't know. That's the problem. I mean, these firms are basically paying lip service to the fact that they're interested in your deal. They're making you do all the work. And, um, I mean, I work with a number of family firms, uh, both in the U S and overseas. And, uh, you know, it just depends on what you got. I mean, uh, you know, different deals fit different family firm funding profiles. You know, no two deals are the same. It just depends. 
And um, I, I really don't like the fact that so many people are willing to just like lead people on and 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 say, oh yeah, you know, we we'd love investing alongside of you or alongside somebody else. Uh, and you know, they, they just want you to do the work. And when you finally get the, you know, all the other investors together to put up the 50% that they, you know, they said they would invest alongside of all of a sudden they're like, yeah, you know, it's that, that was true. Like six, eight, 12 months ago, you know, now our like funding profiles have changed. So uh, we're not going to, we're not, we're not interested in this. So they were never interested in the first place. They just want you to work your ass off for no reason. And you've wasted a year trying to raise money. You know, my deal is let's figure out how you can make money. Let's make money from day one and let's not worry about raising money. Raising money is for bitches who don't know how to fucking make money. So, uh, you know, if you don't know how to make money, then you got to raise money from people and hope you figure out how to make money along the way. That's bullshit. All you're going to do is lose their money, they lose, you lose, everybody fucking loses. So that's a dumbass idea. So, but, um, all right, well, anyway, so I'm about 10 minutes past my hour and it's time for dinner. So my favorite meal of the day. So uh, any other thoughts or comments, let me know. Uh, DM me, comment below. You know what? I'm not even going to be like, smash the like button, hit the bell for subscribe. Eh, fuck you. Fuck, fuck YouTube, fuck it all. So I don't care. Subscribe if you want. Don't, I don't care. But hey, you know, if I can help you, let me know. Happy to help. Thanks. Good night. Where is, there we go.